Okay, we're ready to go. Our seventh competitor from Boulder, Colorado. His company is called Kick Further. Please welcome Sean DeClerc to the stage. Thank you very much. Hi, my name is Sean DeClerc, and this is Kick Further. On Kick Further, anybody can support the growth of brands they love by funding their inventory of physical goods. When that inventory sells, they earn a healthy consignment profit. Kick Further is the only platform where businesses can convert their existing customers into a funding base. This is a game changer for startups and small businesses, and that's why we think we're a perfect fit for a city like Buffalo that's looking to attract and support entrepreneurs. Let me show you what I'm talking about. This is Nadia from Hydrate. Nadia had a great product and purchase orders, but she couldn't find financing that fit the needs for her business. She found traditional finance that was able to fund a portion of her business, but it didn't provide enough capital for her most lucrative channel, direct to consumer. When Nadia discovered Kick Further, she said, this is the solution I've been searching for since I started my business. Within a month, she had launched her first deal on the Kick Further platform. The Kick Further community, which includes thousands of investors, paid for her products. And when she sold those products, she paid them back and they earned a great return. Since then, Nadia has successfully funded four additional deals on the Kick Further platform, raising over a million dollars of inventory funding, most recently with a record-breaking $524,000 deal. With Kick Further, Nadia gets the support she needs to continue building her vision. And Kick Further gets to support another amazing entrepreneur while earning a 5% success fee for each deal that funds. We were the first to come up with the idea for inventory crowdfunding, and we have more deals done and more data than anybody else. This isn't just a new funding platform, this is an entirely new way to fund a business. We're changing the face of banking, investing, and funding forever. And we can't wait to bring Kick Further to Buffalo to help revitalize and re-energize the incredible entrepreneurial spirit of this city. Thank you. Good job. Tutorial, let's kick it off. My question is around uh, liability. So in the event that you know I fund Nadia's uh, inventory and she thinks she's got a great deal with Dix or Equinox or whoever, and that deal falls through, the inventory doesn't get sold through, whose liability is it? That's a great question. So essentially, you as a buyer get to vote alongside the other buyers to decide, what do you want to give Nadia the option to do? Do you want to call the inventory back and cancel the consignment contract? Or do you want to give her time to establish additional sales channels, sell through that inventory, and get your consignment profit? We put the control in the hands of our buyers, and in that way, we're operating a true marketplace. Let's go. So Sheesh. I work with startups all the time. Uh, the biggest problem we see with them is that they're unable to fulfill. So I'm kind of working on Arturo's example here. But in, in the sort of answer you gave, one of the things that you said was, well, we can kind of decide what to do with the inventory, right? In this situation, what happens when the inventory just doesn't come? Uh, we see, uh, I would say, 30 to 40 percent of our startups cannot deliver their inventory on time, and maybe 20 to 25 percent <coughs> never deliver. What happens when you get 10 of those cases happening all at the same time? How do you kind of maintain the trust of your marketplace? Good question. That's a great question. And what I would say is we've worked very hard over the last four years to develop a proprietary compliance scorecard that helps us by looking at the supply chain partners. So we score our businesses based on how successful have they been producing the inventory, how many manufacturing runs with the same supply chain partner. That is where our supply chain expertise helps us to identify businesses that are going to be able to perform. And in the event that they cannot perform and the inventory isn't delivered, that is the business's so, liability. But I'm going to follow up on that because what you're describing are established businesses that have supply chains, that have uh, reliability of supply chain. Those, are, those people won't come to your platform. By and large, those people can go to banks and get small loans. They can uh, use different resources that are available that don't charge the types of rates you guys probably do. So what do you do with the first-time entrepreneur, the guy who goes and raises money on Kickstarter and then comes to your site? I'd love to have David answer this question. There is a middle ground that we do work with. So we actually don't work with first production runs. So a business has to have 
produced and delivered product before they come to kick further, and they have to have an established sales history and plans for that inventory. So uh, before they get to that point where they're big enough where they can get a line of credit that's going to cover their inventory buys, there's a gap where kick further is, is the solution. And for just them. to jump onto that very briefly, Cabbage and On Deck, they charge rates as high as 11.5% a month. So there's a huge market. They're originating a billion dollars a year. There's a huge market of businesses that need this financing where we're a significantly cheaper solution for them than the other providers on the marketplace. I believe you got a question. Yeah, to follow up. So when a semi-mature company comes to you, are you curating at all or are you just leaving that up to the investors, customers, whoever who are bankrolling this? No, so we absolutely have a compliance department. Uh, we look at over 120 items on our scorecard. We dig into the business relationships for our, our uh, marketplace, and we only allow certain brands on. And of course, we always want to expand and democratize access to capital and continue to expand the scope. But for now, we're very focused on serving the needs of the buyers whose trust is irreplaceable to us. So democratizing capital is one of those really feel-good statements. Mm -hmm. But in reality, how do you protect people who are writing a check. Are there any qualifications that they need to have on the investor side? So for our investors, one of the things that we love is the fact that, no, it's, the, it's a purchase of inventory similar to the way that you could go on AliExpress or anybody could go on AliExpress and buy some inventory. So since you're buying a discrete physical product, we can make this platform available to everyone. And the trust in Kickfurther is that we are screening these businesses and we are getting the bad actors out before they hit the marketplace. Okay, so little. last question, what's your um, sort of acceptance rate? Like you have the filtering in place and compliance? Or 10 seconds, 10 seconds. Dave? Or default, um, right? I, I would say about one in 10 companies that we talk to actually qualify. So a lot of them are pre-revenue and uh, they're in a tough position where they're trying to plan out their future and rely on financing sources. So uh, we generally recommend they go to sources like Kiva or Kickstarter, Indiegogo. All right, very good. Thank you, judges. Great job, David. Thank you. Thanks so much. Thank you.